Do you lie awake at night listening to the sleeping person next to you sound something like a freight train roaring through your bedroom? Uh-oh, sounds like the audience. I yes. I'm, yeah. the I'm talking so about I'm snoring. What if I told you going your separate ways could actually make your relationship stronger? Take a look at this. I'm Jamie. I'm Jeff. And I'm Mickey. We are in true love, but we sleep in separate bedrooms. Jeff and I have separate rooms for exactly this reason. She is a very, very sensitive sleeper. The first time I spent the night at his house, I was horrified at the noise he was making. I was like, I don't know if I could even do this. It might be a deal breaker. So then as we got closer, I would wait till she would fall asleep and I would sneak out and go on the couch and then just come up in the morning. So the second we got pregnant, I went to doctors. I did sleep tests. They diagnosed him with sleep apnea. He has to sleep with a CPAP machine. I tried it for one night. I felt like Darth Vader. I couldn't sleep. The next morning, I took it, threw it in a closet. I haven't seen it since. I quit smoking. I had surgery on my nose. We tried everything, and the problem persisted. There is no sleeping with Jeff when he's snoring. Tired Jamie is the devil. I don't sleep. I'll kill him. I need her to sleep. Therefore, this is my man cave. Happy wife, happy life. We literally just moved into this area. We obviously invite our new friends over and Mickey gives house tours. This is my mommy's room. This is my daddy's room. We're worried they're gonna think there's something up with us. We don't want our kid being made fun of because their parents sleep in separate rooms or that there's an issue between us and it couldn't be farther from the truth. We literally live as a normal, probably better relationship than most because we can sleep. We want to find a balance where Mickey knows that we're still in love, but that the separate bedroom thing is not for everybody. It's just something we do. It's literally sleep hygiene. Oh, you nailed it. It's being called a sleep divorce, and Jamie and Jeff are here in our audience to share how a sleep divorce works. But, I mean, clearly, you two are a great couple, so it seems to be working well for both of you. Yeah. Tell us about it. I mean, we started this pretty much from day one. And after the birth of our daughter, it was really highlighted because I was trying to recover from the birth and we wound up doing like a military sleeping arrangement where every five hours somebody had a different shift. And that kind of formalized it, but it was a lifesaver. Any new mom Everybody that. we've told to do that, by the way, has come back and thanked us. Now, and like, how, that was... how does this impact your intimacy, though? I mean, to be honest, you, it, it, it's more regular because you're, you're more conscious about it. And also, we're trying for another... <laughs> yeah, we want that. <laughs> I think what he's saying is there's more day stuff, a lot more afternoon delights, right? I mean, that, in a way, th th this, this arrangement does open up other times, and it's not just nighttime where you, you may be getting intimate, which, well, I think which your is cool. Is that if you're super fatigued and annoyed with your partner, then you're not getting busy anyway. Yeah. So yeah. you might as well try to optimize the sleep and then make special time to bond and cuddle and make time for each other, especially if you're trying to conceive or you have other reasons you need to be together, definitely. And if you're only doing it in the bedroom, you're doing something wrong anyway. Oh. <laughs> Truth is coming I know, out here. Right? I think that from a, a personal standpoint, I think this is a, a personal preference, if you will, if you, yeah. you want to go about doing one of these. But Jeff, I will say from a family medicine doctor's perspective, I still think that you're not really treating yourself to the best ability if you're not undergoing the proper treatments for sleep apnea. Yes. Yeah. It's a dangerous condition that over time will rear its ugly head with other problems. And being a family medicine doctor, I want you to avoid those problems. So I strongly encourage to maybe look at other options, different models of sleep apnea machines. And I will say this, there are some Kickstarter campaigns right now in the works for tiny, tiny machines, literally the size of half of your palm that can fit into your nose and give you some hope for the future. So hope is out there. It's so important for you both to, to get good sleep. We in fact asked our social media followers if they sleep in separate beds and, and their significant other sleeps on another. Let's take a look at our results. Well, 18% said yes, they do sleep apart. 82% still say they don't. I wonder if that changed after watching this today.